Right, without further ado, let's start with a time of worship with Pastor Joshua. Let's prepare our hearts to praise the Lord together. Good to see everyone here. And it's a great privilege for me to worship with you all this morning. And I'm going to start off with a song which I wrote um, some time ago called about the prophetic word that comes that God is going to give us a big time of favour after this pandemic. I believe that the time is right now. According to His promise, God is really going to make something different in our lives. So this song is called, It Is, it is Now. Here we are looking up Looking to you for your glory. Here we are holding on to every word that was promised. And we can hear the Spirit saying, It's time to fulfill. The word that was spoken Cause we've been waiting for this hour The time of your favor The year of increase is now It is now to believe there's a reason to trust in a God who never lies we believe in our hearts we believe in our God our Creator and we can hear the Spirit sing it's time to fulfill the word that was spoken Cause we've been waiting for this hour The time of your favor The year of increase has come Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit. You're captivating my soul, and every day I grow to love you more. Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit. You captivating my soul, and every day I love you more and more. I'm reaching for your heart. Hold my life in your hands Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compares to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth Come Holy Spirit Come in your power I love you Holy Spirit You're captivating my soul And every day 
I grow to love you more I'm reaching for your heart You hold my life in your hands Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compares to this place Where I could see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth I'm reaching for your heart You hold my life in your hands Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compares to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth I'm reaching for your heart You hold my life in your hands Drawing me closer to you I feel the power in you Nothing compares to this place Where I can see you face to face Worship you in spirit and in truth I worship you in spirit and in truth Oh, we worship, worship you, Lord Jesus, we worship you
Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we love you. You are everything. You are our God. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we love you. You are everything. You are Lord. Oh, let us enthrone Jesus above our lives, above this country, above this nation, above our community. Shalom, kota komuni. For you are Lord. Let's just sing this song where you are. You are Lord. You have risen from the dead, and you are Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, mighty God. We worship you. Jesus, Lord, as we come into your presence, come and move, Lord, Holy Spirit, move in our midst, Lord, move in your power, move in your love, sweep over us, Lord, sweep over us, Lord, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, be with us, Lord, and bless every area and every aspect of this service. In Jesus' wonderful name. There was much more at stake than money when Abraham offered his firstborn son Isaac. When God asked for his son, Abraham didn't wait to have ten sons before giving Isaac. He gave the first when he only had one to give. Abraham had only the promise of having more sons. It took faith for Abraham to offer Isaac, faith that God respected and blessed. And God did the same for us. He gave his first in the form of his son, his first and only begotten son, who was given to us while we were still sinners. God gave Jesus in faith that we might one day give our lives to him. The gift of his son came before the blessing of our repentance and salvation. We give our first fruits in much the same way. Before we see the blessing of God, we give it in faith. Giving the first fruits of your income says to God, I recognize you first. I am putting you first in my life, and I trust you to take care of the rest. We have a few announcements for everyone. The church has an ongoing community relief fund where we'd like to reach out to whoever in need who have lost their jobs, fallen sick, unable to sustain the needs of family, or in need of counseling or prayer support. Please fill in the Google form shared in the chat to apply for it. The fund will be dispersed subject to approval by the committee and availability of funds. If you know someone who's in need of help besides yourself, please inform the pastors. If you need help in filling the form, please contact Sis Alice Cho at 012-2277-451. We'd also like to encourage those who are able to help contribute to the fund. You may transfer your contribution to the church account and insert the reference needy fund and your name if you would like to. The details are presented in the slides and the chat box currently. We greatly appreciate your contribution. Here's an update on the Community Relief Fund so far. The amount received from 42 members is 31,600 
31,600 ringgit. The amount dispersed to 17 person is 90,050 ringgit. The amount earmarked is 16,700 ringgit. The balance of fund that we have is 5,850 ringgit. Right, we would also like to announce that today we have a special guest, Dr. Amanda Albert. Dr. Amanda Albert has been a medical doctor since 2013 after graduating from IMU and University of Western Sydney. While pursuing her medical degree in Selangor from 2005 to 2009, she attended New Life Shah Alam too. She was a campus alive leader, youth leader, and served in worship ministry in our church. She was also a CF leader in IMU. Those who would like to further understand mental health issues, please stay back after the service and remain at the main room, as Dr. Amanda will be giving a talk on depression. She will also be with us for the next two Sundays for two other topics on mental health issues. Moving on, we are privileged to have Pastor David for his live sermon. Let's welcome Pastor David to share with us the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Uh, so good to see many of you uh, and uh, over Zoom. Um, you know, I'm really excited. It's so so much happening. Beautiful worship by Pastor Joshua, the communion, Pastor Ron. And later we have Dr. Amanda talking about mental health issues. You know, um, today uh, I have in my heart to share with you a message uh, about the most important person in our lives. Okay. And it's none other than the Holy Spirit. You know, yesterday we uh, had over 30 of us completed uh, a BCM course on pneumatology. Big term. But it simply means the study of the Holy Spirit. And congrats to all who sat through the nice Saturday morning classes with Dr. Simon Cheong. I trust that we all have a better understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and His work. And now is the time to experience Him personally in our lives. Okay. I feel so much in my heart because uh, there's a lot that Holy Spirit wants to do in and through us. Okay. Uh, this passage I'd like to uh, read to you uh, in John 14. John 14 verses 16 to 17 says, and this was Jesus saying, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. Now here we can see the Trinity of God mentioned. Jesus the Son prays to the Father, to send the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, after Jesus returned to heaven, the Holy Spirit came pouring on the day of Pentecost. And we can read all that in Acts chapter 2. And since then, it has been the era of the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you might know uh, the three dispensations or eras, okay? A period of time uh, where each of the Godhead took center stage. In the Old Testament, um, God the Father as Jehovah, you know, that is the era of the Father. And after that was Jesus in the New Testament during the Gospels. And after Jesus was the Holy Spirit since Acts chapter 2. Okay, So you see that we are actually living in the days, in the era Okay, the period of the Holy Spirit. Now, today, the Holy Spirit is still actively moving in this world. Now, some may think that this pandemic has locked down the church and the Holy Spirit cannot move. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything that can lock down God. Okay. I believe the Holy Spirit is hovering, you know, hovering over the entire world. Preparing for something great. Just like in Genesis 1. When the earth was dark, empty and void, the Holy Spirit was actually hovering over the waters. 
until God spoke, let there be light. And there was light. Now we all see light out of this dark and deadly pandemic. Okay? How and when, no man will know. That's for God to decide. He has his own plan and timing. All we just need to know is pray and trust God okay, for strength. Now talk about uh, experiencing the Holy Spirit. First, we need to know where he is now. Now, Jesus said in the passage we just read, John 14, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will be in us. In other words, he is living in us. And that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul wrote in Galatians 4, verse 6, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. And the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Now, isn't it wonderful that we can call the greatest person in the entire universe, Abba, Father? Imagine, just imagine, all right? If our father is king or president, or perhaps a very wealthy man, how would we feel? What more, our Heavenly Father is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God, and Maker of heavens and earth. Hallelujah. You know, and such privilege is only given when you and I, we receive Jesus as personal Savior. And God, sends the spirit of his son into our hearts and live in us and we become his children you know recently uh the great man of god dr david young Vito, he recently passed away at 85. he was one man i admired a lot you know and i learned so much from this man you know especially in my early years as a christian I was uh, introduced to the Holy Spirit through this man, actually. And he regarded the Holy Spirit as his senior partner. And as a senior partner, he would constantly consult him in many decision makings. Okay. In, in fact, I remember he said each time before he went up to the pulpit to preach, he would pray. Holy Spirit, you are my senior partner. You know, help me. Let's do it. So I'm asking the Holy Spirit right now. He is my senior partner. As I preach, Holy Spirit continues to speak. And he once shared about a member asking him, where is God's address? Now, when this member asked him this question, he was stunned, actually. And didn't know how to answer. Where does God live? You know, where is God's address? Probably easy to point him, oh, God's address is in heaven. But what about on earth? So he actually searched through uh, from Genesis to Revelation, trying to find out God's address. It started off Genesis in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve used to meet God there. After that, they were chased out when they fell into sin. Next, he searched and came to Abraham. And Abraham would constantly meet God at the altar by burning sacrifices. Then move on to Moses. Moses met God at Mount Sinai. And then God gave him instruction to come down and build. Tabernacle, the tent, where he will meet God. David, too, built Tabernacle as a meeting place with God. Okay. See, there's a difference between the Tabernacle of Moses and Tabernacle of David. Okay. Tabernacle of Moses was a lot more about uh, sacrifice, sacrifices, 
That particular of David was more about the worship. Okay. And then David had desired to build a more permanent place, okay, a temple, but God forbid him. So because he shed blood, you know, he was, he was a man of war. So he said, your son Solomon built the temple. So Solomon built the temple and God's Shekinah glory would constantly appear in the Holy of Holies. Subsequently, the temple was destroyed when the nation sinned, continuously sinning. And it was destroyed along with the city Jerusalem by the Babylonians. They were led captive, but 70 years later, the Jews returned to rebuild the temple and the city Jerusalem. Now this second temple stood on until the time of Jesus. But when Jesus was crucified, okay, the, temp the curtain of the temple actually was torn, you know, from top to bottom. Okay. What did that signify? Many scholars believe that God actually walked out of the temple, man-made temple. He moved out of that temple and lived in the hearts of all who believe him. Okay. And thus making us the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So at this juncture, Dr. Cho actually found the answer to God's address. So he happily went to his member and said, I found the answer of God's address. And God's address is actually our address where you and I, God dwells. Okay? We are his dwelling place. Such beautiful, isn't it? You know, um, to know that God actually has his address in us. Now, it's such a blessing that the Holy Spirit actually lives in us. Imagine he's staying with us in the same house. Okay? In the same house. I choose you know, sometimes we, we really uh, like to choose who, who, who we want to live in. But a lot of times we, we just have to live with the family, some friends and things like that if we are bachelors. Okay. But here we have such a wonderful person who lives with us you know, in the same house. We can talk to him. We can consult him and we fellowship with him. Anytime, you know, anytime. Okay? Each day when we wake up, we can actually greet him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, how many of us uh, greet the Holy Spirit this morning? Yeah, we can do that. All right. Um, even at night, we can also sleep soundly. Okay. Uh, because the Holy Spirit is in us. He is our peace. He is our provider. And he's our protector. I feel so secure, you know, uh, having God in, in me that I can have all these things, right? Now, in fact, the Holy Spirit is described as another helper. Okay? Another helper. Uh, in the passage we read in John 14, the term another in Greek is actually uh, this term called alos, okay? A-L-L-O-S which means another of the same kind. Another of the same kind. Now, what does it mean? Now, another helper, another of the same kind. Same kind as who? Same kind as Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is actually exactly like Jesus, okay, in spirit form. And he's like Jesus that is uh, always helping us and comforting us, guiding us, you know, and counsel us. When we are in trouble, he is there for us 24-7. And I can go on and on to talk about that. You know, there's so much we can experience with the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, isn't it? How about, you know, making him your best friend, right? Your best friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, my wife is my best friend. 
Now I want Holy Spirit to be an even a greater friend. You know, we can have Him all the time. That's the experience, you know. There's so much, so much, really, uh, with the Holy Spirit. But there's also another subsequent experience that we can have with the Holy Spirit, all right? Uh, it's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, commonly described in the Bible, especially the book of Acts, you know, and also in the epistles, uh, is being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. And the initial sign is usually uh, speaking in tongues. Now, if you Google uh, New Life Restoration Center, Malaysia uh, website, you can see our statement of faith there. It stated, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as an experience subsequent to salvation with the scriptural evidence, namely speaking in other tongues as the Spirit given utterance. There are a number of passages there. In fact, there are a lot more okay, that confirms the sign, right? the evidence. Years ago, uh, I remember attending one Holy Spirit convention. Uh, the speaker was Reverend Naomi Daudi from Trinity, Singapore. She demonstrated you know, how the Holy Spirit could feel a person. Okay? And uh, like this picture, you know, you can uh, show the slide. Um, the process, you know, on the left of the slide, you see there's an empty glass. Symbolizing each of us before we uh, became Christian, we were pre-believer. Okay? The glass was empty. God wants to pour into our lives, right? Uh, but the moment we receive, we believe, okay, Jesus, and receive Jesus into our hearts, God starts to fill the glass, the empty glass, with His Holy Spirit. And that is the second picture, okay. As a believer, you know, God pours His Spirit. That is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we continue to grow in the Lord and we desire more and we thirst for more, we hunger more for the Holy Spirit. And God will pour His Spirit even more into our lives until it overflows. Right? And that's the third picture on the right. We became a spirit-filled believer. We start to speak in tongues. So many of us have experienced that, right? Uh, recently, three of our members, after attending BCM classes, they yearned to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The first was Angie, then later on Lillian and Daphne as well. They were prayed for in the ministry room. Uh, and God just filled them. And they started uh, speaking in tongues. Each share their experience, how they felt receiving the Holy Spirit. And it's truly amazing to hear and see what God is doing. Uh, so if anyone desires to be prayed for, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, do visit the ministry room after service, okay? Pastors and leaders will pray with you. But remember, it's not the pastors and leaders who can fill you. It is Jesus, right? It is Jesus. Uh, in Matthew 3, 11, John the Baptist uh, told the people, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than me, than I, whose sanders I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So, whoever is praying for you, okay, to receive the Holy Spirit, Look to Jesus. I always tell people that I pray for, look to Jesus, okay? It's not me. It's not the people who are praying, but Jesus, all right? I believe many of us here have some point in time in our lives been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. 
you have your story to tell. Okay, each person's experience is actually very different, it's special, and it's unique. Okay, and we need we should treasure all those experiences that we have. Even as I uh, prepare this message, I reflected back my own experience. All right, how I was baptized in the spirit. Um, you know, I, I got saved in my youth days back in my hometown. Uh, after uh, receiving Jesus, I joined uh, an AOG church in my hometown called Bad Bahad, Johor. The church was spirit-filled and very much into uh, praying in tongues. The moment you step into the church, it's like, oh, tongues all the way. <laughs> Pretty noisy. <laughs> but it's quite happening, you know. And a lot of times very anointed. Um, and as a young man, I wanted to experience uh, that because many of my friends, they also experienced that. A few people prayed for me to receive, but I didn't receive. Okay. After a while, I was quite desperate. Okay, how come I couldn't receive and able to speak in tongues? So I went to the prayer room. Back in my hometown church, there was one room especially for prayer i went there to pray and seek the lord alone okay crying out i remember those uh times that i i was just crying out to god fill me oh god i i, I want the holy spirit please fill me and i tried to speak <laughs> Some, sometimes we try to imitate others <laughs> i tried but i, I just couldn't okay? I just couldn't right um but I went on and continued on. And uh, day after day, I was asking the Lord to fill me. Guess what? After some weeks, I still did not receive. <laughs> it was only during one of the uh, worship services while standing there, worshiping along with the rest of the church. Suddenly, okay, suddenly, the Holy Spirit just came. Bam! Okay. And I just spoke in tongues. All on my own, standing there worshipping. Away worshipping. The Holy Spirit came. Oh, I praise the Lord. And the first time I ever spoke in tongues. And that was, that experience was so wonderful, you know, for me. As if I was standing under the waterfall. And God just poured upon me. Years of joy just roll out, you know, sending there. You know, brothers and sisters, I believe if we hunger, thirst after him and seek after him, he will surely fill us. Okay. In his time, he will just pour into us. Now, in case uh, you wonder, what are we speaking? The tongues that we are talking about. Uh, well, actually, Paul uh, did give an indication. He said in 1 Corinthians 13, right? Though I speak with tongues of men, all of angels. Okay? That chapter was talking about love, right? But what I'm trying to say is, you know, Paul was saying there are tongues of men and of angels. Now, tongues of men uh, can be a foreign language, right? or a tribal language or dialect somewhere, which we don't know. We haven't heard of one. We don't understand. That can be the tongues of men. Now, the tongues of angels is heavenly language where the angels talk right, and communicate. Now, all this as we speak in tongues, right, as the Holy Spirit gives utterance, we don't understand. But God understands and God is communicating with us. We are actually speaking to God. Now, very often when praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit is actually making intercession through us, right? Through us. Especially when we don't know what or how else to pray. Okay. Um, I heard of a pastor who one day he suddenly felt led by the Holy Spirit to pray for someone in Thailand. Okay. 
uh, he didn't know what to pray for. So um, he sensed that God wanted it to, him to pray for that man. So he prayed in tongues. He just don't know what to pray for. What's his situation? What is he going through? So this pastor prayed in tongues and prayed for quite a while. Then after his prayer, look at the clock. It was actually 5 p.m. And uh, okay, uh, two weeks later, this man came back from Thailand and you know, went to see this pastor. And he told the pastor, you know, to really his story. You know, pastor, two weeks ago, I when I was in Thailand, I was going through a very, uh, what do you call it, a dangerous situation. And somehow, a miracle happened, and I was delivered from this danger. Then the pastor remembered, two weeks ago, yeah, God told me to pray for you. What time was it? Then he said, at that point of danger, it was about 5 p.m. Wow. Then the pastor realized that actually God prompted him to pray during the time that this man would be, you know, delivered. Okay, He didn't know what he was praying. He was praying in tongues and this miracle happened for him. So we may not know what is happening, but God knows. He may prompt us to pray for someone or a, even a situation. Don't know what to pray for? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. This is a, a privilege that we can have. You know? Now, in our prayer, uh, we can actually pray with understanding, like Paul said. We can pray understanding. That means in the, the, the language we know, English, Mandarin, BM, whatever. That is with understanding. Or we can pray in tongues. On major and uh, tough situations, you know, or issues, I make it a point to pray more in tongues. Pray for my family, and then I will just pray in tongues. Pray for my children. I'll pray, you know, over church, over members, over plans, even over the nation. Okay, we can always pray, you know. Sometimes we have limitation of praying. Uh, I know I was talking to a brother one day, you know, we're praying so much for the nation. Don't know how else to pray already. <laughs> we're praying so much for a pandemic. Oh, I don't know how else to pray. How about praying in tongues? It is a very powerful tool, right? Praying in tongues is very powerful. You know, uh, we have an earlier slide just now. Uh, it tells us how powerful it can be. It actually edifies us, right? It edifies us, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 14. You know, what does it mean by edifies? It's just like a charging a car battery. <laughs> you know, a car, after a while, you don't start, it, it's dead. Okay? I remember going for holiday somewhere and two weeks later came home, the car couldn't start. <laughs> you know, we need to start that, you know. The, the, the engine to run and the battery keeps charging by itself. It's, it's like that. Praying in tongues is like that. You know, it, it's, it's charging us up. It edifies us. Praying in tongues also, it builds our holy faith according to Jude 20. You know, and Paul said in Ephesians 6, uh, it's a powerful weapon you know, for spiritual warfare. Now, um, talking about power, right? Holy Spirit is always, often associated with power. I had several power encounters with the Holy Spirit. I just want to share this one particular one. Some years ago, I actually fell into depression after a bout of uh, discouragement. Uh, tried to do a lot of things, just didn't work. And so on, um, a slew of negative thoughts, you know, kept coming to attack me. You know, and 
saying, I'm useless, I'm a failure, you know, I, whatever I try won't happen. And all these uh, thoughts came, they were like flaming arrows you know, shooting at me. Okay. Uh, each time uh, I tried to pick myself up, I would just fall. Okay. Um, the emotions were really like yo-yo, you know. One day up, next day down. One moment up, next moment down. Yeah. It's a yo-yo feeling. Uh, afterwards, okay, you can hear Dr. Amanda share about depression, how difficult it is you know, for people to go through that depression. It's uh, really tough. It's a real issue, right? It's a real problem. Many people are under mental stress, you know, especially this time of pandemic. So for me at that time, I tried many ways, okay, many different ways to overcome on my own. Right? Um, I spent a lot of times reading the Bible, uh, as any you know uh, good Christian would do, all right, to build our faith. Right? I spent reading the Bible, I pray, I worship a lot, all of my own. I even enrolled myself into Bible seminary. You know, see how any possibility of recovering. And also even took my family for holiday overseas, you know, take a break, you know, and see how it goes. Now all this helped, okay, helped a bit. But the depression was still very strong, was still there. Uh, during that period of time, it was very difficult. My wife and I, we cried a lot. And we really didn't want to meet people, okay? And that was the withdrawal syndrome of a depressed person. Okay? Uh, more so, you know, to meet people who will talk positive things. <laughs> you don't want to listen to positive things <laughs> because you are, you are going through such a difficult time and you are failure. You just want to live in your own shell, uh, self-pity. And actually, it went on for almost two years. Almost two years, I was going through that. Uh, the senior pastoral team, right, tried to help me. Okay. Uh, yeah, they tried very hard, but the thing was still there. Until one day, one day I heard God say this to me. You know, Menkin, I want you to pray in the spirit. I want you to pray in the spirit. To me, it was very clear. It was praying in tongues. But then, in my condition then, uh, I, I was so filled with emotions, uh, sadness. I had little strength to pray. But because God said, and it was so clear to me, I tried. I tried to pray in tongues. But the tongues that came out were very weak. I tried Ah, There was really like no power in that prayer. I just very tired. Just but I prayed in tongues. It didn't last. Okay, the tongues didn't last. It was weak. Uh, but then God kept wanting me to pray in tongues. I persevered on day after day, day after day, week after week. And slowly I realized, hey, my tongue's getting stronger. Yeah. Oh, and then I felt the strength slowly returning. You know? uh, as if like Isaiah 40 says, you know, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I was like feeling, wow, the strength is coming back to me like an eagle. And during the time, I still saw flaming arrows shooting at me. Okay, all the negative thoughts coming. But this time around, is different. Each time these arrows appeared, I would pray against them in tongues. Oh, I saw the arrows coming. and rebut them. And carry on and on. Guess what? Soon I saw those arrows, you know, one by one dropping right in front of me falling short in front of me. It was so real, very dramatic. <laughs> okay. um, 
and slowly all these negative thoughts fizzle off. That's the time I realized I was recovering and growing in confidence again. After two long years fighting depression, the Holy Spirit set me free. Hallelujah. You know, if I have not recovered from this, today you won't see me preaching. Okay. Uh, you know, I had no confidence uh, in life, but the Holy Spirit helped. It's very powerful. Amen. Praise God. You know, in closing, I just want to share with you, you know, uh, this, this early church actually experienced the Holy Spirit uh, in a powerful, powerful way. You know, Acts 2, uh, the passage on the day of, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You know, that day, that incident captured the attention of the crowd who came to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. And as they were wondering what they were talking about and praying about, you know, they were wondering in amazement. You know, Peter stood up and preached his first sermon. That day, his sermon saved 3,000. What a transformation from a man who denied Christ three times. That day, his sermon saved 3,000. And that is only possible okay, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that was the time when revival began in the early church. And we could read on, see how the gospel spread like wildfire. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why God chose Pentecost to call his spirit? Pentecost was actually the beginning of harvest season. And that indicates that God, for all his spirit, to empower us, the church, to go into the harvest field and it's for harvest. Hallelujah. God said, in the last days, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. And that flesh means not only for believers, but on all people, nations, tongues, and tribes. They will experience the Holy Spirit. When that day comes, it will be a worldwide revival. Or the great awakening. Hallelujah. I look forward to more of what the Holy Spirit is doing, um, you know, in this world, as well as in each and every one of our lives. Just let us pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit that lives in us as well as fills us. There's so much more that you want to do and you want to ex want us to experience god i pray for your stirring all right stirring of each and every one of us our hearts lord to even hunger and thirst after you lord i pray that you set us a flame a house of flame lord, by your holy spirit that we will be so full and that we are able to have the power to overcome live a victorious Christian life as well as to be a Christian witness for you, to love you and serve you even more. Yes, thank you, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord. Fill all of us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Reverend David, for the powerful God's message. I'm not sure about you, but throughout Reverend David's um, sermon, I've had a few times where I mochang, my bulu naik. Right. If you had, you know, I just want to share, if you had a knee surgery before, you might know the word allograft, which comes from the word allos, as mentioned by Reverend David earlier. Allograft means taking a, an identical tissue from another individual who is not a twin and to repair our own tissue. So this reminds us that it is time to bring our allies, the Holy Spirit, to fill us, help us, advise us, and raise us up. 
Wow, if you're looking for him, he's already in us. Amen. Now we invite Pastor Pat to bless us with the benediction. Amen, amen, amen. Truly, we need the power of the Holy Spirit more than ever before at times like this. Praise the Lord. May the good Lord bless us and keep us and cause his face to shine upon us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us, be gracious to us, and cause us to be blessed and sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. This blessing for you, for your children, and for your children's children, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.